They just pasted a bunch of keywords. With hashtags, it's very similar with keywords. You need to have a strategy behind it. Much like Google algorithms evolved to punish blogs. The other thing with hashtags is that not only are they being phased out, the algorithm developed in around 2018, 2019. So you really need to put yourself in the shoes of your audience. Blue Monday on a wedding bus. <laughs> I've definitely been guilty of doing that though, quite a lot. Standard wedding photographer, videographer, template. TikTok obviously massively value the SEO element. Start a pack for wedding photographer and videographers. This is how you hook them in. It becomes very difficult to stand out and if you blend in, you essentially become invisible. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Get Seen, Get Booked Marketing Podcast for wedding photographers and wedding videographers. Really interesting topic that we're going to jump into today, the truth about Instagram SEO and three ways that you can take advantage of it. And Jamie, this is a topic we decided to do because we basically keep seeing this conversation popping up in all of the different Facebook groups. So we thought it would be a good one to do on the podcast and have a bit of a chat about it. Yeah, I think I think a lot, you know, we, we see it uh, popping up a lot, but also quite a few misconceptions and, um, you know, assumptions and all that kind of stuff. So we want to clear the air, make sure everyone gets the right information and is able to use it to their advantage. Yeah, because I feel like it's one of those like buzzwords, mm. isn't it? Like SEO, it's always like kicking about yeah. and people are like, right, what? it's SEO, I know I need to be doing it, but it's like, what is it and how can you actually leverage it? Because search engine optimization is obviously what SEO stands for, but how it's been done on websites is now kind of being implemented in a similar way on social media platforms where historically on social media platforms, you've never really had to worry about SEO because, because of the way the algorithm feeds out content, but because of all the updates in the algorithm and the way people are now starting to be served content, we can actually train the algorithm by using things like keywords and hashtags and the way you write copy mixed in with your content. And that's what we're going to jump into today and have a bit of a chat about it. So, and what we have got, we have got kind of three key takeaways from this episode that you can go away straight away and start implement and hopefully get on the path to improving your SEO and improving the amount of content that you're actually, well, is actually being served out to your ideal audience. So where do we want to start, Jamie? What's the first one you want to jump into? I think just jumping into the difference between keywords and hashtags and how they're used. So one of the reasons that we decided to do this podcast is because inside our free Facebook group, Get Seen, Get Booked for when Videographers and Photographers, if you're not a part of it, just search on Facebook and I'm sure you'll find it quite quickly. Um, somebody posted a screenshot of how it's being used. And this kind of brought up the, you know, what is this? And is this the new way forward? Because we could see people, somebody, a certain account, I can't remember what it was, um, but they just pasted a bunch of keywords um, spaced out between like bullet points, just like you would see hashtags, but they were just the, the words themselves. Um, and that kind of created that little bit of what is this? How do we use it? It feels new. It feels a little bit, should we should be using this, feels a little bit exciting almost. Um, so it's just about using, talking about that difference. Now, I think that hashtags have obviously been a, around a long, long time and they're slowly kind of getting phased out. Um, used to be a point where you would be recommended to do, you know, the maximum 30 hashtags. But now the guidelines are three to five to make sure that you're not oversaturating, make sure that it's the algorithms um, got the you know the strength of the right information. Um, and with keywords, you definitely don't want to be just pasting a bunch of keywords in there because much like Google algorithms evolved to punish blogs that were doing something similar, um, it's considered a bit hacky and a bit of a hacky culture. So it's almost considered like you're trying to create an inauthentic experience. And one of the policies for that Meta have for um, both platforms, Facebook and Instagram, is that they want to create authentic user experiences. And if you are deemed to be creating an inauthentic experience, you will be punished by reach. That's why you'll notice if you are were ever a part of any of these WhatsApp pods or group pods where you're all like and comment on each other's posts, um, the algorithm developed in around 2018, 2019 to identify those pods and then limit the reach of them because it's inauthentic experience that is basically, um, 
you know, pulling the wool over the eyes of their users. And if that continues to happen and, you know, in an exaggeration goes off a cliff, then it becomes an inauthentic platform and then they no longer, nobody wants to run ads on them and they don't have a business model. So it's um, making sure that you're using keywords in the right way and that you're not just, you know, block paste and a bunch of random keywords and ear posts. I think you need to do a, a little bit of research as well and find out what keywords that it is that you actually want to rank for rather than just thinking up every single type of wedding related keyword possible and doing a little bit what you said, like that screenshot in the group where it was just loads of random keywords and it hasn't really been thought about, about, right, what do I really want to go after? Because one, what people do with hashtags is very similar with keywords. You need to have a strategy behind it. And we were talking about this on a, on a recent Facebook Live, um, and we are talking about the hashtags where like someone might be on holiday and they'd be like, I hate Mondays, or I love Mondays, or I've seen better days than this. And, you, and you, it, just, it doesn't work like that. You've got to think about, right, if someone, if I want to put my content in front of someone, what is it likely they're going to be searching for? And that's what your keywords in your hashtags need to be based around. And the block text thing that you said is is such a good point because I feel like when people well, when people know that they've got the maximum of 30 hashtags, they probably just had them all saved in the notes up on the phone. Same with the keywords. And then they would just absolutely copy and paste it into every single post. But the other thing with hashtags is that not only are they being phased out, the, they have very little value now in terms of the the way that it pushes your content out there because even, I know we're talking about Instagram here, but even YouTube gives you a message now that when you put hashtags on there, it says that your content will not be searched upon hashtags and it has very little re relevance unless you you have zero description. So what they're actually telling you there is that keywords in the way you write your copy in your description is much more powerful than actually using hashtags. So you don't want to go and spam your full post with a 30. Think of three to five key hashtags that you can actually use and then and then start to use them. But you don't always just want to use the same ones either. It needs to be relevant to the content that you're actually posting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. What are the hashtags that you said that you've seen? Like Blue Monday on a wedding post? <laughs> the most random stuff. Well, it is random, though, isn't it? Like, but but that's what people do, though. So, like, um, they'll they like they like have a post hashtag like, World yeah, Cup, yeah, like like hashtag Blue Mondays, hashtag this. But it's like people don't go on the Instagram and think, do you know what? I'm going to go and search Blue Monday. So it's just a complete like waste of time. So you really need to put yourself in the shoes of your audience and think, right, if they want to find me and my content, what are they going to put into that search box? And this is where, where you're going to build your keywords from and, and your hashtags. But I think what's really important to stress about this, Jamie, right, is that it's not just a case of listing keywords and hashtags. You've mm -hmm. got to be able to write these keywords into a piece of copy that actually makes sense. Because I think that the post that you were referring to that got put in our free Facebook group was literally just a list of a bunch of keywords and it, and it didn't, it doesn't really make any sense. You've got to be able to write it into sentences and copies that make sense. But more importantly, it gets people wanting to read more. Yeah. It's got to be a piece of, in an ad, you'd call it your primary text, but your, the, the text on your post, it needs to be something that is. And, you know, the standard wedding photographer, videographer, template, the standard. Do you remember that Halloween meme where it was, like, photographer, costume? Or, like, it would be whatever it was, costume, and then it would give you, like, the... Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, the meme? Yeah. Do you remember? I remember I sent you it. It was, like, a, it wasn't photographer, but it was, like, an influencer, something like influencer Halloween costume. And then it was, like, bright orange. Like, it was just, like, an absolute Mickey take. I'm going to have to have a look at it. Yeah, we'll have to find it, but um, we'll have to overlay context on the video. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so the the standard sort of starter pack post template for wedding photographers and videographers is starter pack. It's a start. <laughs> I love that. The starter pack for wedding photographers and videographers, and this is this is not like a, a jab or anything like that. This is just it's it seems to be what everyone does because everyone is you know everyone's very busy, but it tends to be you know some kind of opening quote about love or something famous or a line from a song, a lyric from a song. 
and then a sentence that is i really enjoyed shooting this wedding for you know bride and groom at a particular venue can't wait to shoot here again whatever it might be and then they tag all the rest of the suppliers to try and get in and then you've got your hashtags and whatever that's like the that's like the standard template but instagram 101 yeah that's the instagram wedding photographer videographer starter pack um and it has you know it works for a lot of people but a lot of people do it so it becomes very difficult to stand out and if you blend in you essentially become invisible so it needs to be you, you have to make sure that you are enticing people to engage and continuing to read and wanting to read more and one of the ways to do that is to use what is called curiosity gaps on the beginning of your posts so making something that you making sure that you are using that you are giving details of something exciting happening but not revealing the full details in the same way that if you've ever watched something like law and order suits all of these programs you know these bingeable see these bingeable programs that you know every time the credits roll up you go oh man and i gotta wait till the next one but then you just keep watching like back in the day it used to be oh, i gotta wait till next week but now it's just like i've got to wait three seconds until the next episode starts playing <laughs> but um but so it's about using that that's what they are they're open loops to get you to continue to watch and we want to create something similar so as an example instead of opening with your with your song lyric from um you know whatever it is uh, a million love songs later instead of having that opening line you could say something like um jenny and david had a jaw dropping so be descriptive ha, be descriptive had a draw jaw dropping wedding at this venue but what happened after the first dance nearly blew me off my feet before i get to that i want to thank all of the other suppliers that i work with blah 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 and just that as a really quick off the top of the brain example that there creates all oh, right i wonder what happened and it makes people want to read more and they will read more um so creating moments like that is what is gonna the algorithm is gonna notice that people spend longer on your posts because they're reading they want to read about the story what happened obviously it has to be true you have to just pick a moment from that particular wedding and create that curiosity gap around it but when you do that when people spend longer on your posts and, and reading through it's a the the algorithm is tracking how it knows how long someone stops scrolling on your post and it identifies this and it's a really good signal and your reach will go up a lot because if you are showing videos that's a, a your average watch time for your videos is going to go up if you've got carousels your average you know swipe through the carousels that's going to go up the average stop time all of that just that simple tip is going to not just make your genuinely make your posts more interesting and engaging but it's going to, the outcome of that is going to be that it gives you more reach. But within that, you have to, you know, you have to make sure that you include these keywords that we're, that we're talking about. So make sure that you, that you pick your keywords and you're able to put them into a post that um, encompasses that kind of curiosity and engagement. I've definitely been guilty of doing that though, quite a lot. Like the way you've just described that post there in terms of like, like the famous quote, I, I had a fun. It was an absolute pleasure to shoot like Billy and Rebecca's wedding. Like and then, and then it, I, I had such a fun time working with X, Y, and Z. And like, and like, I've been, I have, I, to be honest, if I go through my last ten posts, I reckon they're probably all like that. Or, and I, I know when we talked about this on the live, and we, we didn't really want to use the word laziness when I when I labelled it, but sometimes you are just so busy, you, you just overlook it a little bit. And yeah. sometimes I don't even tag the supplies. I've been guilty of just writing like kind of one sentence, um, like like do you know, like Billy and Rebecca's wedding, like, and then and, yeah. then, and, then, and then that's it. So, but the problem is if you're doing that now, because the social platforms are investing heavily is probably the wrong phrase to use, but because they're taking a, a lot of credit from keywords and the way that your copy is, and it gives signals to the algorithm of what, what about, about what your content is, but more importantly, who you want the or what audience you want to see your SEO, um, search engine optimization, the way you write your copy, the keywords that you use is actually becoming really, really more important. Um, and like, even if we talk about TikTok for a second, like, I can't remember the last time I went on TikTok and actually read the captions, but now TikTok have matched 
Instagram's character limit of 2,200 characters. So TikTok obviously massively value the SEO elements, even though they know that people aren't reading it at the minute, it doesn't mean this is going to change. What they are looking for is to get those keywords in so they can serve your content to the audience that it's meant to be in front of. Um, so it's really important that you do, if you're not doing this now, that you really start to think about, it's not even a case of just listing three to five hashtags or writing 10 keywords or five keywords. It's about identifying those keywords, but being able to write some solid copy. Because even though creatives, and when I say creatives, I'm talking about like your images and your photos, sorry, your images and your videos are so important, like they're massively important. I feel like in the wedding industry, especially, we sometimes forget about the importance of the copy because the copy is, is if, if someone reads that opening line and they want to read the next line and they want to read the line after that, this is how you hook them in. And especially getting them to kind of build up that trust and relationship with you through your social media content. Copy is a massive skill that... I don't want to say that you should master because master is a bit of a strong word, but it's something that you should get better at or at least have a decent understanding of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that, the you know, we can just see examples of it in general where, you know, people who aren't masters of it have deployed it to go viral. So even the basic, you know, the basic thing that kind of came out of, you know, out of the general populace and certain like um, new sites and stuff is just having a video with what wait until the end. Now that is an example of how copywriting enhances a post that is copy. That is not the creative. That is not the media format that is putting copy over something to make it more enticing. Generally speaking, people buy things and do things because of the words that they read or hear. So it's not enough to just show them something and have them come to that conclusion on their own. Mm -hmm. um, with that, you know, having those text overlays, you'll, you'll notice now when you start to think about it, that TikTok is riddled with text overlays on the videos because, you know, it's not a, it's not as copy, uh, post, post copy heavy as other platforms, but it's still very, very important. And I think, one of the places that's a really good place to kind of um one of the things that I do to help come up with things is I listen to uh podcasts that are like true crime podcasts and um you know I mentioned before about law and order and suits and all that and they're kind of harder to pick these out of because you're watching it as you listen to it as well. But these podcasts that, that I listen to, like it's like um unexplained mysteries, true crime, serial killers, there's a lot of free ones on Spotify that I listen to. But it's just that you get, you become accustomed to how they open the podcasts to build tension, to build intrigue, to build all of that. And that, you know, using that on your posts, it might seem dramatic to be talking about this, but to use that on your post in terms of, um, you know, something like as the bride and groom were having the first dance, little did they know the night was about to take an unexpected t turn. Do you know what I mean? And it could be a very positive turn. You're just creating mm -hmm. that intrigue and you're leaving that open loop. Um, and that now, since I've, since you start listening to these things and whilst I'm listening to it for entertainment, it just gets absorbed by my brain. So I'm always listening to them and it's they're just all the company, the company of mind a lot easier. Um, similar to something um, called copy work, which I've been doing for a few weeks now. It's just, um, well, I haven't been as good as it as I've, I haven't been sticking to it as much as I should have because I've been on well and stuff. But the, um, Basically, just any copy that you like or that you find interesting, just write it out or type it out, like word for word, like you would in school. But the reason for that is that you become, again, you become indoctrinated to that style and that writing tone um, and how they, and the structure of copies. Um, but that, you know, that's a, that's a little bit more, of, not necessarily extreme, but a little bit more like time dedication requirement. But I think that is a really good starting point. Is you can take the, what, what do we call it? The Instagram photographer, videographer, where the yeah. starter pack, you can take the starter pack and just add that beginning line of, you know, what happened next nearly blew me off my feet. Little did they know the night was about to take an unexpected turn. And then after that section, you can have, you can, you can still tag your other suppliers. It's good for reach when they're sharing or whatever it might be. Um, but making sure that people are bought in to the rest of the post and want to know what happened that's really important and a massive signal to the algorithm because i feel it's definitely as like 
creative people in the wedding industry. I think it is really easy to kind of neglect the copy side of things because yeah. a lot of people have the idea that, oh, me, me photos and me videos will do the talking for me. And to an extent, they, they can, but they can only do so much. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I remember years ago when I'd done this training, um, I can't remember what it was called, actually, is where you put people into four categories based on, and every, based on different personalities, they, they get put into a different color. I can't remember the name of the test. There's a proper famous name for it. Um, but Myers Briggs. So yeah, Myers Briggs. Yeah, and it's like the way I did mine. I did mine about four days ago. Did you? Enough. All right. Yeah. Well, it's just it's just an interesting thing because like not everyone's visual. So even though you even though someone's looking for like a wedding photographer or videographer, not everyone's a visual person. And some people will, will want to read, um, and they'll want to read in depth. Um, it's like. It's like the the example they used when I was on the train. It was like someone goes and buys a TV from Curry's and someone like me might just look like 85 inch 4K, right, done, bought. But then you might get someone else who comes along and wants to read the ins and outs of the instruction manual um, and knows the ins and outs of the specs. And I'm not saying you've got to go that depth in that depth with your, with your wedding content, but it's understanding that people will take things in a different way. So your, your creative element is fantastic. That's what's going to grab attention. Effectively, that's, what, that's the product they're buying but it can only do so much and it needs to be backed up with copy um, and it, it, it needs to get people excited. So when they're reading the copy, it needs to be like, right, okay, I can really imagine having this guy at me wedding and I will have um, Billy shooting me video and like they, they can't wait to read the next line. Then they'll go across to your website and it all matches. It, it's, it's all really important. So it's not just about your creatives actually writing your copy, but the reason we're talking about copy so much is because you need to incorporate your keywords because the keywords need to be blended into your copy. So then the social media platforms know how to serve your content out. Yeah. There was, um, th there was a good question that came in actually, Jamie, on the Facebook group um, from John. And I thought it was a really good one, so I'll let you answer it. And he basically said, when you're writing your copy, how long should your copy actually be? Because we know that you've got the character limit on social of 2,200 characters. But what's your thoughts on the length of, of your copy when you're incorporating your keywords? So the length of copy is only ever an issue when it becomes too boring. It's only ever yeah. too long when it is too boring. That's, the, that's like the golden rule. But you should also, you don't need to make it longer than it needs to be. Um, as long as you hit your points, um, you know, you, you see what you need to what needs to be said in terms of um, showcasing your competence to deliver a potential client's dream outcome. Um, and I think that as long as you do that and make sure that it's engaging, it has that curiosity to me, like it doesn't have to be, it never needs to be a certain length, but it always, um, it, it always needs to have, be long enough to have impact and you need to hit that emotional chord because when, um, consumer behavior is that people buy with emotion and reason with logic. So we have to hook them on emotion and then try to give them the tools to reason it with logic. Um, and I think that, you know, I think there's a kind of a, a middle ground between that, the, the reading type and the visual type as well. Um, I think that using something like Hemingway app and making sure that you're never writing anything that's over a grade seven or eight is in terms of reading level. That is going to massively help visual people read, but also trying to use your copy in a way that paints, that makes them feel like they're watching a video as they're reading it. So make them make them visualize things in terms of how you describe what's going on. Um, but go back to the length. It's only, you know, you don't have to, it's not, there is no or percentage outcome to say that it's you know this many characters as x this many characters as it all depends on how interesting it is you could certainly have a really good post with that open and curious line with that uh curiosity gap that we talked about um the chunk about your suppliers and then the context of the story of the wedding underneath you can do that and that can be long it can be short but as long as you give enough context to generate emotion in the reader um, and make them and compel them to take action. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's for people listening as well. Like, because I know a lot of people even struggle like, Oh, this is like another thing that I've now got to do because people think, um, even posting regularly on social media when they're not even thinking about the copy and they're just doing the one line as and tag suppliers, a lot of people find it a chore just to kind of keep up with that. But we're, 
we we're coming now really in a in a situation where social media is becoming really competitive in terms of like there's so many of your competitors on there like every single person in the wedding industry well let's say most of them are going to be using instagram at least um how regularly they use it it'll differ between company to company person to person but if you want to make sure that your content is getting pushed out in front of the right people, it is important to spend a little bit of time on this. And it, it doesn't have to be something that you massively overthink and you, you're spending like hours writing copy. But if you can just come up with a bit of a framework and you can get into a bit of a routine, right? And like you said, it's still okay to tag your suppliers and it was great working with these people, but having that curiosity gap and then making people just want to read the next couple of lines, but include some of your keywords with some relevant hashtags these sort of tips is what's going to help you kind of get that content in, in front of the right audience. I just don't want people to feel like it's like a massive overwhelm and they're like, all right, now I've got to do this yeah. sort of thing. But, now I've got to learn how to write stories. <laughs> yeah, but but but, but, it, but it's important. It helps. Like th this is what this is what is. It is going to help take your content to to the next level if that's what you want to do. Definitely, definitely. There's um just looking at some of the things that people can actually do as well. Um. There's a setting inside of Instagram now where you can set the alt text, A-L-T, alt text. And this has been around for a while with regards to like putting descriptions on images, especially from like a web design perspective. Um, but you can add alt text to your descriptions of images as well now. So any imagery that you upload into Instagram, before you press post, you can go into the advanced settings. Well, you can at the time of recording this podcast anyway. Um, go into the advanced settings and you can set your alt text now. If you leave this blank and you do not go into the Instagram app to do it, Instagram will try and select the alt text for you based on the information that it has, but you're much better off putting in a description, like even if it's like the venue name or the location um, or something that describes what's going on in the actual photo, you're best off taking control of this yourself because even though like this sort of SEO stuff and alt tags is a much longer game to see results, over time, you will start to see a pattern of what, what does and doesn't work. So if you can take control of doing all of your own keywords, your hashtags, your alt text, over time, you're going to start seeing improvements. But it is it is an actual long game. But by tracking your data over time, and when I'm talking about data here, you can just simply have start looking like the analytics inside of like Instagram. So go and look at your reach, um, look at your engagements, look at, look at the reactions, the comments, the likes that you actually you are getting and, and just seeing if you are reaching more accounts. Um, it even breaks down things like, um, like new followers or current followers that um, your content's getting pushed out for. But it's important to realize that all of these things combined, so like your SEO, your copy, your keyword, your hashtag, the actual content itself is what the algorithm's deciding on how it's choosing your audience. Like to give you an example, you can put an image inside of ChatGPT now and ask it to describe the image. So it's they, they can read your videos, they can read your imagery and they know what is going on. So you've got to tie everything together. It's never just one single element that's going to determine that your, your content's getting pushed out in front of the right audience. It's a collective. So you've got to look at all of these different things. Yeah, and I think just to wrap it up, there's a few things with it, like a little bit of a bonus thing that we can go over in terms of uh, what else you can do for SEO. Because the SEO is search engine optimization. So Instagram SEO is about being findable when people are, are searching for their wedding photographer, wedding videographer. So making sure that your bio and um, description of your Instagram account includes the most important keywords. So if you are, I don't know, a Northeast wedding photographer, make sure that you've got something of that nature in your description. Um, you know, there's a, there is a character limit. I feel it escapes what it is off the top of my head, but find out what it is and try and make sure that you can get as many keywords in there as possible. There used to be a time when, again, people would fill that with hashtags, but now again, it's not necessarily, um, as important as the SEO. So just making sure that you're using them in a way that is a valuable uh, sentence for people trying to find you, but also that triggers the the search engine to make sure that you are shown first. Yeah. And a lot of this stuff as well, like a lot of these tips isn't just for Instagram. They are transferable across like onto other social media platforms. So I suppose just one kind of takeaway from the tips that we've gone over is just kind of go and do a little MOT on all of your, um, on your social platforms and just have a look at 
what your keywords look like, what your descriptions look like, what's your copy like on your post, and just to see if there is anything that you can improve. If you do have any questions about any of this, though, specifically like about the SEO or just your, your marketing in general for your wedding business, make sure that you jump into the Get Seen, Get Booked Facebook group. Um, we go live in there every single week. Um, we'll answer people's questions throughout the week as well. Um, you can just search Get Seen, Get Booked on Facebook. It's going to come straight up, but I will have the link to this in the description but thanks very much for listening everyone and we will see you on the next episode cheers guys cheers guys